Have you wanted to learn about smoke cleansing? That's coming up right after this. Welcome to my channel. My name is Mel. I am the creator, the owner, the operator from Mel's Divination. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe, like, or comment on this video. If you are a regular friend, welcome back. Thank you for joining again. I try to post every Wednesday any kind of witch or spiritual or tarot based information. I do apologize, I'm gonna have some music going next to me. I hope it's not too loud. It's uh, hot here, another heat wave where I live. It started today, it's in the 90s. So I do have my air conditioner on behind me and the fans going, so I have some music going, hoping to drown out the air conditioner fan. So today we're going to talk about smoke cleansing in your home or smudging. I'm doing smudging in quotations because some people know it as smudging, some people know it more as smoke cleansing, okay? This is a little bit of a tricky topic because depending on how it's approached, it can be considered cultural appropriation. So we'll talk about that later, but I do want to at first acknowledge that right off the bat. What we're going to talk about in general is smoke cleansing overall. We will talk a little bit about sage, but the general discussion is going to be smoke cleansing, okay? The whole, it's kind of intro to smoke cleansing today. So many people have heard about sage smudging, right? Sage, dried sage, lighting sage, blowing it out, and, and you've seen it done all if, if you've been following spirituality or witchcraft anywhere, even on TV, you've seen it done. The fact is, it's one of the very first things that I was taught on my spiritual journey by a mentor. And as well intending as these people, mentors, teachers are, they may not be teaching you as well as you think. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to go over it today. Because sage is great. Smoke cleansing is great, but there's a lot of tips and tricks that people don't cover that you might need to know, especially as a beginner if you're not aware. And I learned the hard way, so we're going to talk about it today. We're going to talk about things that I found out later on that I wish I had known early on. We're going to talk about cultural appropriation. We're going to talk about things that have to do with uh, responsibly sourced. So, here we go. First of all, what is smoke cleansing? And I should have gotten a demonstration ready, so I'm gonna pause the video and go grab it, and I'm gonna show you. Hold on, I will be right back, guys. Okay, so I ran around and picked up, grabbed a quick couple little things that I had around my house. Um, I don't have everything that I would normally use, but I have a couple. So smoke cleansing is basically when you take an herb, plant, or incense, and you burn it. You use that smoke around your space or around tools to remove the energy and replace it with whatever vibration the intended item is that you're burning, okay? So I have some loose leaf sage right here. I have some cedar right here. And then I have an incense stick, just for some quick examples, okay? Now, we'll get more into sage in a minute, and I'm gonna do a whole video on sage later, so we're just gonna briefly touch upon sage. So, I do mine, and a lot of people, when I started out, I started doing it the way that I was taught, which is with an Alb Albany shell and a turkey feather, and but that is cultural appropriation because that's what indigenous people do. Now, I do have indigenous Native American in me, but we're not gonna get into all that. So, what I do, and this is, I like the loose leaf sage better because it's um, not as much you can choose, you can select what you do, what you choose to burn. So I just light it, and then I burn it. 
and then you smoke cleanse. So I don't really want to cleanse anything with sage right now, but I have a credit card here. So if I wanted to cleanse this credit card, because credit cards, I don't really care if I sage them or not, you would move it over the smoke, okay? So that's sage, and I have my little cauldron right here. So you always wanna be careful with fire safety. Then, another one. This one's really tricky. Cedar burns very, very fast. And the smoke is hard. Like, I don't know if you can hear it. So it burns really fast. And that's why I have my cauldron. You gotta be careful with cedar. It goes fast, fast, fast. I usually light it in the cauldron. Okay? And then we have... And it's the same thing. You just light it, and we have incense. Now, I do have my air conditioner blowing behind me, so it's a little hard. And then you let the incense, if you've never done incense, I do stick incense. There's cone incense. There's loose leaf incense. It's totally up to you, but I prefer stick incense. And then again, with stick incense, you can cleanse. I'll cleanse this credit card. You cleanse things, all right? So that's kind of, and I have an incense holder right here, and I'm making a mess already with all the ashes. So I have an incense holder that I stick it in. So I'm just going to put this over here, off to the side, and we'll talk a little bit more about this stuff. So when d there's different vibrations, okay, with those things. Those are three different things that I just use. Sage, cedar, and incense, right? That incense is a eucalyptus incense. So depending on the kinds of vibrations that you use, the kind of thing tool that you use, it will depend on the type of vibration and the type of result that you get. We'll talk about that in a minute. I wanna finish talking about what smoke cleansing is. It is literally been done for centuries in all kinds of cultures. And I haven't done a huge research on it. I haven't gone back and researched like how long ago it's been done. So feel free to do that. Uh, I'm not going to quote like, oh, it's been done for this many centuries because honestly, I didn't have the time to research that for you guys. But I know it has been done across cultures. I know that it's been done in, I'm pretty sure the hoodoo and voodoo culture. I know in the Christianity and Catholicism, when priests burn frankincense and myrrh in their churches and rituals, that's part of it. You can use frankincense and myrrh in your I use frankincense incense a lot for cleansing. It's been used in indigenous tribes, as I mentioned, for sage, and it's been done for, I'm sure, more than centuries, I'm sure. But as I said, I haven't done, researched how far back smoke cleansing has, has gone because it's across so many cultures and it's so varied that it, it would take a long time to do that research and I don't have time to do that right now. I just wanted to get this video out for you guys. What can you smoke cleanse? What can you smoke cleanse? What can you smoke cleanse is pretty much anything you wish. So I have some, I have different decks here. I smoke cleanse all of my decks. I've smoke cleansed my phones. I've smoked cleanse my computer. I've smoke cleanse my space. I've smoked cleanse my car. I've smoked cleanse jewelry. I've smoked cleanse Pretty much you name it, my wallet, whatever. Stuff that you're going to do workings on, rituals. You can do a house, a room, items for ritual, a person, crystals. Oh, I don't have any crystals. Oh, yes, I do. I always have my citrine near me. Crystals, things for divinations. The list is, limit is limitless. I will link above the prosperity spell for demonstrations of how I actually do cleansing. It, it does depend on your approach and your intention in the items you use for cleansing, like I mentioned. What should you smoke cleanse with? This is where it gets tricky. What should you smoke cleanse with? So I showed you sage. I showed you cedar. I showed you incense, right? Now, it's something that I usually still say, use your intuition. Always use your intuition. Definitely do that and what you're guided to use. However, there's some issues around this. You need to know the properties of what you're burning. So if you're burning some kind of loose incense or some kind of loose herbs, you need to make sure what is it. 
Is it going to make anybody sick? Certain herbs like mugwort, certain herbs when you burn them, and I'm not gonna list all of them because there's a lot, they can make you hallucinate, they can have hallucinative property, properties in them, certain herbs have different vibrations, everything has a different vibration. So I used cedar and I used sage. Why did I do that? So sage has one type of vibration. Cedar has a different one. They smell different, they work different. You need to know what you're burning and be aware of that. What is the purpose? Why are you trying to cleanse? What are you trying to cleanse? And what do you want as the energy after you've done the smoke cleansing? So I was taught to use sage to cleanse my space very early on, right? I was taught it by somebody who only worked with angels. She didn't work with herbs and she wasn't a witch. So it was kind of like a very minor version of an education when it came to that kind of stuff. And what I later learned about sage was more extensive. And again, I'm gonna try to do a sage video later. I plan on doing one. So this short version about sage is, it is basically like spiritual bleach. What does that mean? So at least that's how I consider it. Uh, it's it, it removes all energy it goes through and it wipes it all out which is why I didn't really want to burn much of it sage gets rid of pretty much everything it gets rid of the negative it gets rid of the positive so I used to go through and sage constantly in my space and not back it up with anything else I didn't realize when I first started out I didn't realize sage on its own is not the best thing because you need to do some other energy after sage. You need to do cedar, something that's protective, something that takes care of your space, some, or rosemary is very good. Something that's more gentle, something that's easier for your, your depending on what you're cleansing. Depend, it does depend what your purpose is. Again, it depends what the use is, depends what the purpose is, it depends what you're doing, okay? The other thing was Palo Santo, I switched to using that, which I don't have any of that right now. It's more gentle, but Palo Santo is controversial as well because of where it comes from. It comes from sacred trees that I believe are in South America or Latin America, and they are slowly going extinct due to people like us who use it to cleanse. So it's overuse, being used, that, being people buying them, buying, oh, Palo Santo, it smells so good, it's so good, that the vibration is good. It's like people buying it and now the tree, there's only so many trees of that. So I have kind of shifted away from Palo Santo because I don't want, the whole point of being a witch is being in tuned with nature for me and I don't want to disrespect nature or the earth or the vibration and to me that's kind of I can find other tools for cleansing there's so many there's so many so it's just not necessary so I highly recommend whatever you choose to use these follow these tips right make sure it's not toxic to inhale I like to use cedar that's my big number one. The sage I have, I don't usually burn that anymore. I bought that in bulk and I use it for other things, other workings that I have. I almost never burn it. Um, make sure it's responsibly and sustainably sourced. So the sage that I have, I bought from an organic farm that grows it themselves, a special farm. The cedar that I have, I literally grow it here. My notes keep falling. Happy air conditioning time. So the, this cedar, I collect when it falls from the tree. I do not go and trim the tree. I literally will go after a storm out in my yard and I will pick up dropped branches and I will save them. That's how I, and I, I thank the tree. Um, I have multiple trees in my yard with this cedar type of energy. So I do that. So make sure it's responsibly and sustainably sourced. It's something that 
you're not buying in excess, you're not buying in bulk that's going to destroy a plant because the whole point of being in tune with nature is to be protective of nature and that could become a problem. Also, make sure it fits the vibration of what you're trying to do. Are you removing all energies, like sage? Are you wiping everything out? Are you doing protective work with cedar or rosemary? Are you wanting to lift the vibration? What is your purpose? What are you trying to do? So make sure that you do your research with the whatever you're choosing to smoke, to burn, Make sure you do that research, okay? I also, for incense, tend to try to do something, make sure it's well sourced. I have incense right here, but I try to buy it from good companies so that, like, I did a video in the Dollar Tree. I wouldn't use Dollar Tree incense to cleanse my space, to cleanse my house, to cleanse anything. Uh, it's junk. <laughs> So make sure you're using good quality incense if you're going to use incense. When smoke cleansing your space, be mindful of your small furry friends. So cats, dogs, birds, hamsters, guinea pigs, whatever. Whatever your little furry friends are. Hedgehogs. I love hedgehogs. Their lungs are so much more delicate than ours. And some things burning can be toxic to us or them. And it can be bad for them to be around that. So just be very mindful about the space that you're in when you're doing this. Also, you may want to opt for a non-smoke spray instead if you're in a space that you're not really allowed to do that. Because it does smell. It does have a very distinct smell. Be mindful of people with allergies if you live with others. I have a girlfriend whose husband has allergies and she cannot s smoke cleanse her home when he's home or if he's gonna be home soon. She has to be very mindful about how she smoke cleanses her home uh, until he leaves. So always practice safe fire use. Notice my little cast iron cauldron that I have here, it's tiny but it's, it's, if I throw something in it that's on fire, the cast iron is fine for it. Uh, this is soapstone. It's not gonna catch on fire. So you gotta be careful about what you're putting your fire materials on so you're not setting a fire that's very dangerous. I recommend cast iron, even if you just buy a little tiny one. Even if you just buy a little tiny one. Or old pans, an old pan that you won't use anymore. A lot of people recommend ceramic plates or bowls. I do not because those break. They shatter when you get fire on them. I speak from personal experience. Not a good time. Okay, also open windows so that the yucky energy can get out. So whatever you're trying to cleanse, especially if you're trying to cleanse a space, a home or a room, and your windows are shut. You're basically chasing the negative energy around your house. Open the windows so you can shoo it out. It has somewhere to go, okay? Don't forget your closets and corners, places that energy likes to get stagnant and stuck. Make sure you go in there. Make sure you, you smoke in there, you blow the smoke in there. Guide that smoke in there. Also, okay, one more thing. The cultural appropriation comment. There's been a lot of gatekeeping in this community about the word smudging and about using sage. I do caution you with wording and an awareness of specific cultures. Although I've never shared this publicly before and I just mentioned it, I am of indigenous descent. And being told by people I can't smudge, literally, because I'm not native, but that was an assumption. They didn't know that I was native just because I don't look like it. It's really hurtful and presumptuous. I am native. I am indigenous. It's in my blood. So just be mindful. Be mindful of cultural appropriation. Do your research. And yes, you can smoke cleanse, but don't be stealing 
from cultures and saying that it's yours. So there's a very fine line there. There's a very fine line, but there's also a lot of gatekeeping. So it's a really tricky, slippery slope there. So just be careful. Be careful how you approach things and be respectful to the cultures that some of this comes from. However, smoke cleansing is everywhere and it has been for a very long time, centuries, like I mentioned. So I hope that helps you. Again, be smart, be careful, be wise, do your research, listen to other people too, not just me. And if this resonated, hit the thumbs up button, share, subscribe, comment, and I hope to see you all again in the next one. Bye.